Today I'm gonna to show you how you can take this block of wood in this paint can and turn yourself into a knot tying machine. We're gonna go over one-handed knots, we're gonna go over two-handed knots, we're gonna go over deep ties, and then I'm gonna show you the dreaded, the infamous one-handed surgeon's knot. Let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name's Dr. Eric Pearson, I'm a pediatric surgeon, and I'm here to scale surgical education, get you more comfortable on the wards, in the ICU, in the operating room, and of course, to crush your exams. Today, we're gonna be doing some knot time. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do the one-handed knots, the two-handed knots. We're also gonna do some deep ties, and as I said, I'm gonna show you that one-handed surgeon's knot. It might throw your attendings off, but it's a good one to have in the bag. All right, so let's get started with a two-handed knot. All right, so here's my knot tying setup for you guys, and this is definitely a DIY setup, okay? And here are some of the things you're gonna need for a good knot tying setup. And this is kind of the easiest, the cheapest that we could do it. The first is you want a piece of wood. Now this is about a foot long. Pick it up at Home Depot or Lowe's for a buck. The second thing is a little bag full of these hooks. Now this is gonna allow us to put some rubber bands in there. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. And that's because you wanna learn to tie under tension. You want a little resistance. And so this setup allows you to do that. I put the hooks about 20 centimeters apart. And these are nice because you can just screw it right in. Okay, and now when you have your hooks, we're able to put a rubber band. These rubber bands you can put up, get at any supermarket, okay? And we just get our rubber band there. We put that under a little bit of tension. And now that's gonna give us some tension to tie against. And that's really important. All right, I also have a pair of scissors. I have a string and for simplicity's sake, I colored one half black so you could see it. The other one is left white, all right? And then I have some suture. Now, when you're learning to tie, you wanna get yourself some nice thick suture. So this is number one silk and that gives you a good tactile feeling. Now, some people will say, oh, you should always be tying with gloves on. Well, I think when you're starting out, it's okay just to use your hands, okay? This is gonna give you a good sensation, and then when you pick it up with your hands, then you can move on to tying with gloves on, okay? If you are gonna tie with gloves, make sure you're tying with well-fitted surgical gloves. I wear a size seven and a half, and I would suggest you just get in there, find the right size of glove for you. Okay, so let's do that two-handed knot first. Let's start with the two-handed knot. So we have our string. I marked one side of the string that's a little bit darker so you can just see the difference. Okay, let's pass that under. We have our rubber bands and our hooks. So that's gonna give us really good tension. Okay, so we can feel that knot going down. So the first thing is we wanna always cross the string or cross the suture. So that way we're ready to throw that first knot down square. Now I reflexively always go my left hand in front, okay? It's just the way that I always pick up the suture. It's kind of arbitrary, it's whatever you are more comfortable with. Okay, so let's start with that two-handed knot. So in the two-handed knot, most of you are right-handed, so let's do it with our right hand. And then what we wanna do is we wanna form an L, okay? An L where the thumb is on the other side of the white string, okay? We're gonna cross that over, bring the left-handed string over the thumb, Bring the index finger through the loop, get the thumb on top of the string, and through. Okay, that's gonna pull that down nice, all right? Now what you'll see is that it's just one throw. So that's not gonna keep tension at all. And that's why you may be throwing air knots. So it could be a good idea in this situation would be to throw a surgeon's knot. You have a little tension there. So let's do a surgeon's knot. So in a surgeon's knot, let's get this halfway, halfway. Okay, in a surgeon's knot, we're gonna do the same thing, the L through, but we're gonna do it again, finger through, L. Now that gives us two throws around, and we tie that down. That's gonna keep its tension as long as we don't pull up. If we pull up, it can lose the tension. So that's why we always wanna keep our hands soft. All right, so then we can complete the knot. So how do we do that? We do the L again, 
finger thumb. We cross our hand so it comes down square, nice and flat. Then we can come back, thumb through, index on, back. Okay, do the L again, finger through, thumb around, boom. Here, this one, thumb through, finger back. That keeps us tying square knots, okay? Now let's say we wanna do that with our left hand. Same thing. We can go L, white over, finger through, thumb back. We have to cross our hands to get it square, and then we just come back, keeping those square knots. Here's the L again, boom. Okay, finger through. And we see, as long as we can keep alternating, call that drafting, we'll be able to keep tying square knots. Okay, all right. Now, let's move on to the suture. So if we're gonna do suture, okay, you can pick up silk, like I talked about earlier, this is a number one silk, or a 2 ethabond is nice, it's another braided suture, okay? Ethabond is really nice to tie with, okay? So let's pick up some ethabond here, we're gonna put it around. Reflexively, we're always gonna start out suture like this, so we have our left hand in front, okay? Now we're gonna do our two-handed knot, all right? So we do our L, thumb is in front of the suture, we bring it over, index finger through, thumb on top, boom. Okay, now remember, if we tie that down, we're not gonna hold tension at all. So in this case, we gotta do our surgeon's knot, okay? So in the surgeon's knot, we form our L and do two throws. And when we tie that down, we're gonna see that that keeps tension really, really well, as long as we don't pull up. If we pull up, it'll release. So we keep that, and then we can finish our knot up. We wanna turn it around. Ooh, I was about to do a one-handed knot. <laughs> okay, so just like I said, the L, index finger through, okay, and we keep coming around. And as long as we keep moving our hands, we're gonna have nice square knots. Okay, now we can do that with the left hand as well. So L, boom. Boom. And we just keep tying these knots down and you can see that they lay nice and flat and these are gonna be nice square knots. Okay, those are the square knots there. So let's do a one-handed knot. So one-handed knot, we're gonna grab our suture, we're gonna grab the 2 0 bond here again, okay? And now we wanna get our suture in front, so left hand's in front. We're holding our suture, balancing on these middle fingers, okay? And when I'm doing a one-handed knot, I think about index finger throw and then middle finger throw, okay? Let's do these with the left hand first. So on an index finger throw, you're gonna wrap your finger around the opposite suture and bring that same suture through, okay? Now, the problem is, again, you're gonna have some difficulty here because the tension's gonna give apart and you don't wanna tie air knots. So what do you do? You've done that index finger throw. Well, you can just do it again, okay? And if you're posting up with that left hand, you'll be able to bring that suture right down and now it's gonna stay. So, and then, so two finger throws in a row is gonna bring that suture down, okay? Now what do we do after that index finger throw? Well then we switch to a middle finger throw, okay? Now the mingle, middle finger throw is when we're bringing the opposite suture across, middle finger up and around, and then down, okay? So let's see both again. We have the index finger throw, and we have the middle finger throw. So when you're throwing suture down, we always wanna put that knot down, okay? So with the index finger throw, like here, we can put that down with our middle finger. With our middle finger throw, we can put that down with the index finger. So our index finger throw, middle finger goes down, middle finger throw, index finger goes down. Index finger throw, middle finger goes down, middle finger throw. And so let's do one with the right hand. Okay, so with the right hand, we wanna have our right-handed suture in front, okay, that's gonna help us tie that knot square, okay? And so here we got our index finger throw, 
Now we want it to be on tension, okay? We don't want to tie an air knot. So again, we're going to post up with our left hand, take our right hand down, and we're going to follow that down. Okay, now we're going to have a knot with no air knot. Then we can go to the middle finger throw, okay? Index finger pushes down, our index finger throw, middle finger throws down. Middle finger throw, index finger throws down, index finger throw, middle finger throws down. Okay. Boom. Again with the left hand, index finger throw, middle finger throws down, middle finger throw. All right, so we've learned the two-handed knot. We've learned the one-handed knot. Now I'm going to show you how you can use this paint can and another special treat. That's this magnetic hook you can pick one of these up just at home depot i can put a link in the screen or lowe's whatever hardware store and we're going to want to put that paint can and that hook together right in the bottom okay so you can see that this is going to mimic the deep pelvis or a deep region of the body that you're tying down to okay great model for practicing those deep ties and super cheap less than five bucks all right let's do it all right, so now we're gonna do these deep ties, okay? So we have our paint can, all right? This is just an empty paint can, it's a metal paint can, okay? And then we have a magnet with a hook. You can pick this up for a couple of bucks, again, at Lowe's or Home Depot. And we're gonna to wanna to put that hook right in the bottom of the paint can, okay? Now what that's gonna allow us to do is get the feeling that we're tying deep into the pelvis. And that's gonna be a really common need if you're doing open general surgery, okay? And the biggest thing that you can learn from this is how to tie far away from where your target is and follow that knot down, okay? So I'll show you here. So let's go ahead and get this suture around the hook. So we have our suture here. It's hard for you to see in the bottom of the can. We're gonna hold our suture just like normal. We're gonna start with our index finger throw and we're gonna follow that all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna put our finger all the way to the bottom of the knot. We're gonna come up and we're gonna do our middle finger throw. And then we're gonna follow that up, posting up with that right hand, okay? Or that opposite hand if you're indeed tying right-handed. And so I do my index finger through there, followed by my middle finger throw, always alternating. Right, if you want to do it with your right hand, it's the same. Okay, so index finger throw, posting up with our left hand, followed by middle finger throw, following that down. Okay, and the paint can gives you a really good model for tying these deep knots. Okay. We've learned all the knots, we've learned, we practiced the deep tying. Now I'm gonna show you that dreaded, the infamous one-handed surgeon's knot. Are you ready for it? Let's go. So now let's do that one-handed surgeon's knot, okay? Now I think this is actually kind of a pretty cool knot. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a middle finger throw with one hand and an index finger throw with the other, okay? And when you do that, you're left with that surgeon's knot, okay? And that's gonna hold nice tension. So again, you can do the middle finger throw and the index finger throw at the same time, and that's gonna give you that nice surgeon's knot. So boom, boom. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed that today. I just wanted to show you some easy techniques to practice at home on a really low fidelity, low cost model. I would recommend that you practice with the string first. You can see the pattern of how those knots lay down. Then move up to a thicker suture, like a number one silk, okay? You could ask the OR circulator if you could have an extra packet. They usually come with 12 strands and plenty to practice on, all right? And then you can start to move up. So you can practice with 3O or 4O, which would be really common in general surgery, or 5O and 6O, which are more common in pediatric surgery. The braided suture, like a Vicryl or a silk, is nice and easy to tie with. Uh, the other suture, a monofilament, like PDS, monocryl, or proline, are a little bit more difficult to tie with. So after you've mastered tying with string, go up to that braided suture 
and then move up to that monofilament suture, you know, a 4050 proline. Practice that without any air knots, without any kinks, and you will be excellent. This is a great model for home. All right, if you enjoyed that, leave me a comment, share it with your friends. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you get the next video, and let's do it. If you like these practical videos, definitely let me know. I just wanted to add this into the mix. I thought you'd find it high value. All right. Until next time, as always, study hard, be safe.